What's up people, welcome back to the channel, hope you are well. Today's video is everything about creatine, hopefully answering all of your frequently asked questions. Things like, does creatine cause hair loss? Should you take it when you're bulking or cutting? Can men and women both take creatine? Should you cycle it? Should you load it? How much should you take? What's the best form of creatine, etc. I'll be answering all of these questions in today's video. So please do drop the video a like, and if you are new around here, make sure that you hit the subscribe button as well to support the channel. Let's roll the intro and get into answering all your questions on creatine. So first of all, what is creatine? Well, it's a compound formed through reactions of amino acids in the kidneys and liver. It's also found in the muscle cells. Now, creatine is found in things like meat, but in order to actually get the benefits of it for athletic performance, you have to be consuming an obscene amount of uh, meat and get, getting it through your dietary intake. So it just makes more practical sense to supplement it, and this is why athletes uh, such as sprinters and anyone that's a serious gym goer really supplements it worldwide. Now, how does creatine actually work? Well, creatine is used by supplementing five grams a day, roughly three to five grams a day. You reload the phosphocreatine stores in the body, which is then used to regenerate ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate, which is uh, essentially the energy currency for the body that's used in short-term intense exercise lasting up to around 12, 15 seconds, something like that. And what happens is when you supplement creatine, you can regenerate this ATP and get an uh, extra burst of short-term energy. Now this may translate into a couple of extra reps in the gym or a, you know, a push at the final end of a sprint. So this is why people use it to get that extra bit of performance benefit and there's some studies that suggest that you may get up to like a 10 to 15 percent benefit in terms of uh, athletic performance. So what are the potential benefits of supplementing creatine? Well first of all increasing muscle mass, increasing strength and power output as I say in the gym uh, or in, in athletic performance things like that. Potential cognitive benefits as well there's a bit more research needed around here but there is some evidence that suggests that supplementing creatine may uh, improve performance in cognitive tests, especially in elderly people. Um, it can also reduce, potentially reduce the risk of depression, and this is thought because of how it impacts serotonin reuptake into the brain. Additionally, uh, a reduction in fatigue, so improved endurance as well. So now I'm gonna get into some frequently asked questions. First of all, how much should you take per day? The general recommended dose is three to five grams per day. Some people may need a slightly higher dose, but the, you know this is going to be dependent on your body weight, essentially, however you are, um, and you know how it how it impacts you. But you know, for simplicity purposes, just take five grams a day. Um, next common question is: Should you cycle it? There's rumours that you need to, you know, it, it's going to damage your kidneys, so you have to cycle it in and on and off of it to prevent that, which is just not a myth. So that is not the case. There's no need to cycle off it and you don't need to do a loading phase. So the loading phase rumor that was the fact that you need to do seven days of taking like 20 grams of creatine a day to saturate the creatine stores quicker. Um, but you know, there's no evidence that you're gonna get, you're gonna get massive benefits from doing that. Um, and it could have just been a, a ploy by supplement companies to try and get you to use up your, uh, use up your stash quicker, but there's no need to, to do a loading phase of creatine. And if anything, you're just gonna increase the risk of getting something like a stomach cramp from taking like 20 grams a day in one go um, because of the, the potential for water retention, which I'll get onto in the next point. So for simplicity, just take five grams a day, no need to cycle off it, and no need to do a loading phase. So does creatine cause hair loss? The answer to this is unlikely. There's no study that has linked taking creatine to actual hair loss. The reason that this rumor started was a study in 2009 on rugby players that found that uh, 
Rugby players that took creatine for a loading phase for one week and then continued supplement, supplementing about five grams a day for three weeks and they found a, a significant short-term spike in a hormone called DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone. And DHT is linked to binding to androgen receptors in the hair follicles, follicles and this is thought that it leads to them falling out. Now, in order to for DHT to come about, we need the presence of free testosterone, which converts to DHT. And this study on rugby players didn't actually look at testosterone levels, so we don't have any conclusive evidence from this study on the matter. And a further 10 studies since then have actually shown that creatine doesn't have any impact on testosterone levels. So the studies are quite mixed on, on this, and I think the, the study on the rugby players was essentially creating this rumor um, that maybe isn't necessarily true. If you are very concerned by you know your hair loss and you've you've got a genetic predisposition for this, then potentially avoid it if you're worried about it. But um, the evidence isn't very conclusive on this, so I think the answer to does creatine cause hair loss is unlikely. When should you take creatine? Doesn't really make much difference. The main thing is just being consistent with it. Five grams a day. You can take it before you work out, after you work out. It's not going to make a significant difference. Potentially a bit of benefit after workout in terms of. Uh, nutrient uptake but you know it's very it's not significant also people freak out I think when they're cutting that they shouldn't be taking creatine because of a potential short-term increase in water weight over the first few days that you are taking it um, and this is nothing to be concerned about generally this is going to level out and over the first few days you may just have an increase in water weight when you're taking creatine and there's nothing to be concerned about so do take it yes when you are bulking and when you're cutting does creatine cause kidney damage? No, the answer to this is no, it doesn't. I think this is a situation of correlation rather than causation. So there was a study in 1998, I believe, um, on a, a guy that had had pre-existing kidney conditions for about eight years, who was then found to be supplementing creatine. Uh, and then obviously the link, that when that went out to the press, etc. There's a there's a link that's been made, a correlation that's been made. Um, creatine causing kidney damage which you know there's no evidence to suggest that it actually does um, so you know no need no shouldn't be any concerns on this what form of creatine should you take you should take creatine monohydrate because it's the most well researched form of creatine and there's no evidence to suggest that other forms of creatine are more pure or, or going to give any more benefits than just taking monohydrate and it's cheap and effective so no brainer so creatine monohydrate is the type that you want to focus on now can creatine benefit men and women yes is the answer to this uh, if you are a woman and you consider and you you want to improve your body composition increase your muscle mass and you're looking at the other potential benefits of creatine then it's definitely something to consider there's actually some evidence to suggest that it can in, in help with things like reducing the risk of sarcopenia in older adults which is the loss of muscle mass and there's also you know potential especially potential benefits to women in terms of a lower risk of depression and this can be particularly beneficial in terms of uh, post menopause as well so there's some evidence to show that improvements in muscle mass bone density for post menopause and women that are going through hormone hormonal changes so it's definitely something to consider I, I think it could be potentially very beneficial to females and the final point is yes if you're an older adult there's definitely some potential benefits taking creatine potential cognitive benefits of improved performance five to ten percent performance in in things like iq tests potentially um, so it can have some benefit there and as i said some improvement in terms of reducing the risk of sarcopenia um, loss of muscle mass when combined with resistance training so that is it for today's video hopefully that has cleared up a lot of questions that you may have had around creatine I'll put the link to the studies that I've referenced and the sources, which are mainly from examine.com, which I highly recommend as a source to check out whenever you're looking at things like supplements before investing. Do your own research, be sensible with it, guys, and just make sure that you know what you're doing before you look to invest in any supplements. And as I always say, supplements are going to do very little if you are not taking care of the basics, such as getting your protein in, sleep, nutrition, eating well, and just generally looking after yourself so 
uh, prioritize that first before turning to supplements. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Reminder to drop the video like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Have a great rest of your day, and see you later. Bye.